Yet another Monday, and you know what that means. A Monday Night Live in episode 34 has got to be an absolute banger, as they say, because it's all things IPL. It's, of course, going to be reflecting in a fantastic WPL and much more in this one. My name's Abhinish Hegde, and as you can see, the ever-smiling Nikhil Popat and Akshay Kumar Swami. Good to see you, boys. What a weekend, Akshay. I'll have to start with you, because... Have you caught your breath? Have you relaxed? Have you celebrated enough? Has a penny dropped with RCB winning their first ever fucking title, man? Get in. It's actually not really sunk in yet. It'll take me a lot more time, to be honest. Just like, because we, we've been so used to being on the other side of the result. It's, it's almost very different. And it was just so, so heartening to see. I mean, something that Avnish and I discussed after a nice tight hug today in the office, of course. Shriyanka Patil, seeing all those local girls come good, Asha Shobna, then there was of course Elise Perry Kate, because like all these names, all these international stars, everyone, you could see them gelling together. You could see that this this wasn't just a team, the team clearly had gelled and had done really well for themselves. So yeah, I mean a fantastic feeling. And how are you feeling, Amish? I want to also hear about you. I'm over the moon. I was just looking at it time and time and again, the highlights that is, because we, of course, were watching the game on mute, so we couldn't really kind of get with it. And I know it wasn't really a humdinger of a game, but the fact that RCB crossed the line, making us wait as fans. I know Nikhil will, of course, have his thoughts about how that really unraveled last night. But I generally feel like it's a way forward for this franchise. It's a big, big push for women's cricket in the right direction because of the RCB power that we have as a fans. Yesterday, some of the what videos that we saw from church seats, was it? I think other parts of Karnataka as well. You can't even tell if that's a men's game that they're celebrating or the women's game. So that's how amazing it has been. The WPL as well, to see the Ferocia Kotla packed out. And from an RCB perspective, honestly, I know I call them out. I criticize them. I don't like some of the management over there. But props to you all. You guys have done exceedingly well. I know there have been people who've been in that organization for 15, 16 years now, ever since the inception. Fantastic work. And a shout out to Danish, who I've worked with, Sriram, I've worked with, and of course, Nikhil Sosley as well, who is the man posing with Virat Kohli on a video call for Spriti Mandana. Right, we've kept Nick's waiting too long. First of all, Nick, how are you? And you've appropriately wore yellow because of the IPL preview and all of that, but I'm sure you had space for red in your heart yesterday. Of course, it's the only jersey that I have taken in the last four or five years. So, and I've worn, I've worn it as well for you uh, guys that I've said in the past. And something that I pinged, uh, you know, Akshay just a while back that, you know, cherish this first win. It is, it is this first that just makes your heart smile. Uh, you know, you knew that when you woke up. You know that when you're speaking for the first time now in the show that the first five seconds of this video. You can hear the smile in the heart that it is it is pleasing. There is no problem in the world. Everything is fine. We are happy. Uh, you know, it's that meme, this part of my life, this is the best part of my life. So I think uh, a lot of people have waited a lot of time. And it is sport, unfortunate for DC fans. You don't see Meg Lanning crying. Uh, so it, it told you how much it means. And there is always an other side. But uh, today is the day. And this week or this year, maybe, who knows. And now that I'll be there for the IPL as well, you, you, I won't rule out a double. But uh, more of it, more on, on that later. So firstly, congratulations to both of you. And to every every fan who's always waited for their size to win. Well done. Yeah, well said, Nick. So honestly, it means a lot coming from you as well. And Shlok going on to say a very good thing. Guys, do you know you're the only channel who has a live reaction record of RCB winning? It'll always be in the channel. We'll witness it time to time. But thank you so much. And that's what I mean, right? It's historic. We were here to capture it. And again, props to people like Akshay, props to people like Shomi, Neha, who've literally given their life and soul to the WPL uh, scheme of things. So again, invisible high five, Akshay, even though I've literally thanked you enough for the WPL success, man. But yeah, I mean, RCB fans, you can celebrate it, honestly, because it's been a while. Hopefully, there's some sort of bus parade going to happen. I think we're hearing prior to the Unbox event, there could be something around the stadium. So if you guys are in Bangalore, big RCB fans, come check us out because we'll be doing some sort of content around it. At least we plan to. Let's see how that all unfolds. Remember, the Monday Night Live is a weekly podcast, 34 episodes in right now. If you're listening to us on Spotify, thanks so much. If you guys are watching on YouTube, please give this video a like because what we've been doing or played is been getting you guys interactive as much as we can. And we don't want to do anything else tonight because tonight we have a special guest also going to be joining us. Not one, but two. 
I'm definitely looking out to the both of them because <laughs> you guys will know in due course. Dan Weston, an old friend of the channel, will join us in just a bit and we will have all things discuss IPL. Remember, we're not going to go too in-depth tonight because Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week, we have mega previews coming across your way and that's going to be amazing because there is going to be a four-man panel. Only time will tell who that fourth person is. You guys have seen him before. I won't give you guys a more clue of that. Manikata, hello to you and Shlok going on to say good things as well. I've found the channel during WPL. Hope relationship will go along. Shlok, I can't thank you enough and spread the word about cricket.com indeed. And can you please tell us what you've done after the live stream? It's a good question, Chikuji. I essentially had such a superb Sunday because it was almost like RCB, yes, they hit the winning runs. And I was kind of still watching my United game. And I was just like not even caring about that because RCB had won. And I was just like celebrating about that. And then when the trophy celebration was happening, that was a time when I think United equalized. And then they got the winner. And I was like, man, look at this Sunday. And I was telling Akshay and the watch along as well. 15 years ago till the day, 2009, exactly it transpired from an RCB United perspective where we lost both finals that day. It was really something can forget indeed. But keep your comments coming through. Good to see Joe Biden as well, the Gurgaon Wali, who joined us in the oh. long yesterday. He's saying it's definitely Somesh, so you know our channel, and it is Somesh. So it'll be good to pick Somesh's mind, especially the fact that he's all away in Europe by himself. 100 people watching, please like this video before we, of course, talk about all things IPL. I can't wait. We will talk about certain friendlies. I, play. I think KKR played the Cricket Association of Bengal, RCB plates of sex. I think there's more games going around up and down the country. Suri Kumar Yadav apparently won't feature in the first two games from Mumbai Indian. That is confirmed because he wasn't taking part in the friendly tonight and on Wednesday. And good to see everyone joining us on the Monday Night Live. It's like almost, guys, they've taken and they've got the memo. I'm pretty proud of that. And you too as well. We'll have to say quickly on that. Yeah, the more the more the merrier in that sense, you know, they also realize you're talking cricket, but it's also fun. And uh, it's not gyan, it's just it's just proper cricket conversations without anything. Yeah, we may be, you know, crossing the line or you know, threatening it at times, but that's okay. That's all uh, fun and parcel, part and parcel of the game. No, it is. And we certainly cross the line many times. I mean, I don't know how much you guys pay notice to that, but that's <laughs> what brings the best out of us, I generally feel. Uh, SS98 saying views on Hardy Pandya and Mark Pancha Press Conference. We'll talk about all of that and much more. And if we do miss any of the questions, remember, this is the Monday Night Live, so there is a 12th man space. And Akshay has a brilliant quiz lined up as well, so we can't wait to show you that. But let's get on uh, to the fun bit of this preview and start with pretty much our ultimate levels. We were planning to do that with Dan, which we will. But before that, we want to, of course, straight off the bat, have predictions of IPL 2024. It starts on Friday. We'll be doing a watch along for that. And Akshay, we'll start alphabetically with you first and your predictions in this tournament. Now, orange cap, purple cap. I don't know if you've been bit by things starting with why, but why, Yashasvi, and why use Vendra? Yashasvi has been in great nick and I expect him to have a proper solid uh, IPL season. Not that he didn't last year, but last year was sort of the first time, you know, he really lit up the IPL in, in, in you know, in, in true blue sort of fashion where he scored like, what, 500 plus runs. This time around, I'm expecting him to score like 700, 800 runs. So, yeah, that's why Yashasvi Jaspati is also coming uh, on the back of a fantastic India-England series that saw him what have... Eight successful knocks out of ten innings, so that's that's the kind of consistency we're talking about here. With Chahir, Chahir has got a thing or two to prove. He's been, uh, you know, sort of uh, taken off of the BCCI contracts and all of that. There's there are a couple of things, you know, building up to sort of what you can only imagine would be a Chahir comeback. Like that, that'll be great to watch at least, you know, in terms of entertainment and you know how we Indians are big fans of entertainment. So given that, that's why I'm, I'm sort of rooting for Chahir that way. Let's hope he has a good season for himself and also for India. So, yeah. And then your top four. How have you gone for LSG, brother? LSG is supposed to be our rival. Haven't you forgotten about that? So, yeah. It's it's, it's also important for me to not be so blatantly biased towards um, RCB. Of course, I am an RCB fan, but it's come on the way. No, but, uh, but you, you generally think JL and KL will be a winning formula there. It's not about them being a winning formula. The core they have is so good. And like even if they sort of mess it up, you would expect them to make it to the top four, which is what happened last season. They were horrendous tactically, but despite that, 
because of the kind of 11 the kind of setup there not just 11 the kind of squad they had they were able to just sort of bulldoze their way into the playoffs which is what i expect to happen this time around as well they've got a solid 11 you know the middle order is very 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 solid they've got a lot of all round options most of their bases are covered so there's very little jl has to do to be honest like he has to sort of fuck up massively for them to not make it to the playoffs to be honest with the kind of squad they have Okay, interesting. And obviously, you think Arsenal are going to win him, and I think that as well. Let's get my prediction because Dan's going to be joining us in just two minutes, and we'll get Nick's predictions after this as well. Now, I've gone for Shubman Gill. I was genuinely worried who I could put out as an orange cap, guys, because I was thinking to myself, who is that opener? I was thinking Jaiswal for a second, but then Shubman with the new captaincy and all of that, he might still deliver. I feel Patiran will be super important for CSK as well, home and away. And you look at my top four, CSK, KKR, RCB and SRH. I've gone for Stark and Cummins in there with my beloved Southern franchisees. And yes, the winner, RCB. Hopefully, it's a double because we saw the King return today and I just saw Virat just enter that room and I was just like, wow, Akshay showed me that video. Right, time for the CSK fan to have his predictions before we get Dan on. And Nikhil, what have you gone for? Because similar but different. Explain. Yeah, Jaiswal, uh, well explained by Akshay. I think a very good, very good run of form. So I expect him to just continue on that road. Uh, Purple Cap positive. I feel he's going to be very, very vital. Uh, will potentially be held by Harshal. Hopefully he and Nathan Ellis play. Uh, that could just really set it up for him to take a lot of wickets at the end. Uh, top four, probably straightforward in terms of CSKMI uh, and LSG because of the potential in terms of people that they have. And their usage, uh, LSG usage is hashtag terms and conditions apply. Uh, the fourth place is, I think, uh, KKR. Purely from the point of view that if they get conditions right, they have an Indian middle order to love. Uh, but a lot will rely on Stark. So in terms of him leading and ensuring that Harshit Vaibhav are not too much bothered. But I expect them to sneak through. Uh, winner is, again, hardly a doubt there uh, why CSK. But I have a prediction. Two of them. Uh, Kohli to have at least three runs and do not rule out a 2016 kind of a final SRH and RCB wala as well. So two of these predictions, we can clip it out for later. Multiple Jeez. times for Virat is very, very obvious. But yeah, let's see. Okay, that's amazing. Predictions off to a flyer and it's uh, going to get only better on this Monday Night Live because it's time to welcome one of the old friends of the channel who's just been absolutely brilliant to always kind of talk to and follow on Twitter. I'm talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Weston. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. And it's like good to see you as always. Where are we? You're stuck in a car somewhere in the middle of yeah, the UK. Yeah, I was in the middle of a middle of a long drive, haven't Ash? Yeah. So but I, I couldn't resist the opportunity to join you on the show. So uh, I stopped at the services and uh, got myself ready for the show. Super. We really appreciate your time, Dan. And you're already kind of wearing a seatbelt, even though it's going to be a fast-forward no, show. <laughs> it's all right. So, honestly, we're four days before the tournament. You've read so much. We've seen some of the players crop through in the last couple of days. What's your gut feel? Straight off the bat, do you think it's, again, going to be a perfect swan song for MS Dhoni? Virat Kohli, first IPL beckons. Talk to me. Well, uh, look, I think I think both of those two teams in terms of CSK and RCB are going to be in the mix uh, for qualification. Um, I've got a I've got a view with CSK that I've, I've expressed a few times before to different people that you kind of look at their squad, work out the amount of wins that they're going to get, and then double it, and that's what they usually get in, in the group stages. Uh, in terms of like, they're just a well-oiled machine. They, everyone knows their roles, and, and they've got an instinctively excellent captain as well, an MS Dhoni. So I think I think that that the, even if their squad looks a bit old and unimpressive on paper, actually it just kind of works for them really. Uh, and it will be fascinating to see how they approach the mega auction next year with with that in mind, and perhaps a bit of a new a new broom in in, in that group. Um, RCB, look, I'm not sold at all on their bowling. At, at a low, that that's a big big problem for me, and and it goes against my instincts in terms of understanding the the. Bowling strong teams usually do really well in tournaments compared to batting strong teams. But they have Andy Flower. And and this guy's a qualification machine. Like, I think he's got the highest qualification rate for any coach in, in, in world cricket. And there's you know, a de decent sample size of coaching over the last few years. He, he is a qualification machine. And um, he gets the job done. And I think that, that, that that's going to be a massive positive for them 
moving forward with the Andy Flower factor. I think that if we're looking at other teams' qualification, I noticed that a couple of you guys earlier said that you, you quite fancy KKR to, to, to get through. I mean, spin-wise, I think they look really, 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 really impressive. Um, but pace bowling-wise, I mean, a lot, a lot is going to lie on the shoulders of Mitchell Stark. Uh, and I think that the jury is out as to whether he's going to, one, be a, a world-class bowler at the IPL level. We haven't seen that for a long period of time. And two, actually whether his body can cope with the um, the workload that, that he's going to be forced to, to deal with, obviously playing game in, game out for KKR being the attack leader. So so that, that would be a concern for me. Um, the team, actually, that I think are really like, leading the way in terms of qualification chances is RR. I just think they've got more more boxes ticked than than any other team. They've they've got a better domestic bowling core than than a lot of the other teams, and and they've got explosivity with the bat as well. Obviously, now we've seen in the Test series recently how good form Jaiswal is in. I mean, like, I, I keep saying it, but I really mean it. He's one of the few batters in the world right now that I would pay good money to watch just as a spectator. You know, like the the guy is just so, he's he's so exceptional. Shot, shot maker, high intent, but doesn't really trade that off in terms of the lack of stability, which is a really key sign for, for a world-class batter. So I think that they've got a chance. Uh, Gujarat will always have a chance with Rashid Khan in their team, and, and it's been interesting to see how he's bounced back from those back injury problems in the recent series against Ireland. I think he took four wickets for not a lot yesterday. Uh, and, and then I think a qualification conversation is... It's difficult to have without Mumbai Indians. Um, I think that there's a lot of a lot of ifs, buts, and maybes about their squad. Uh, how much will Hardik bowl? How much other bowling do they have apart from Bumrah? Uh, these these are massive concerns for me, and I think they're going to have to solve those problems. Pierce Shaw is going to have to have another good year for them, uh, and they're going to have to find a gem from somewhere out of their scouting, I think, to, to go alongside Bumrah in terms of pace bowling, or unless they structure up very differently to what I expect in terms of overseas and domestic kind of yeah combinations that they could have. So, yeah, I think that, that those teams, for me, are probably, you're looking at the, 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 the crux of the qualification conversation. Okay, interesting. I mean, you've thrown in some names over there and keen to pick your mind about your predictions as well and lots of appreciation uh, coming your way, Dan, and naturally so. There's some questions as well, which we'll fire in from the fans in just a bit and Akshay and Nick have a few lined up for yourself as well. But we just, of course, uh, started the show with our predictions. Now, a lot of people are asking you, so we'll go to hold you hostage, I'm guessing, if you kind of call it wrong right now. So who are your top four, your purple cap, your orange cap and your winner, please? Yeah, well, I saw you guys also did that when I, was, when I was waiting backstage on the show. So I kind of just prepared myself a little bit for that in advance because I think, yeah, you didn't quite tell me that I had to do that, Avinash. So this is, this is, it was I want to stop you. A bit early. <laughs> it, it's, it's a long one with Weston, if you know, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I went for the four teams to qualify with RR, GT, CSK and RCB. I went for uh, Shubman Gill, top, top run scorer. Uh, Jasper Bumrah's top wicket taker. I think, unfortunately, that's kind of predictable uh, in terms of he's probably the favourite to do that, right? But he's just a class above uh, in terms of fast bowling. Uh, and I went for eventual winner. I, I went for RR in the end. Okay, that's insane. Ara to win it, an encore of 2008. Who would have thought? But you heard it here first on cricket.com. Before I get to Nix and Akshay, let me just inform all of you guys right now to keep your comments coming through, your questions for Dan as well. Because what we're doing in the next 10 minutes is discussing all our ultimate levins for IPL 2024. So basically, the rules are simple with regards to how we picked our levin. It's obviously everyone who's playing in the IPL this season and random picks we feel that could really, really add value to the tournament. It could be a plethora of names, but we've gone, of course, the IPL route, seven Indians and four overseas players. So let's start with actually um, Akshay here, uh, and then Dan can chip in also with regards to his thoughts on Akshay's level. So Akshay, the stage is yours, and talk to me about your ultimate IPL 2024 level, buddy. Yep, so Kohli, Jaspar, like I've picked them as my sort of opening duo. Uh, Kohli, of course, there might be a bit of that RCB bias, but um, that was a last-minute change. I earlier had Gaikwad. 
I felt I needed someone who has some sort of captaincy experience, you know, in the IPL. I know Kohli is not the greatest when it comes to you know captaining at the IPL stage, but he at least something's better than nothing. That's that's pretty much what I went ahead with. Sky at number three, self-explanatory. Maxwell picks himself. So does Rinko Singh and Klassen at number five, number six. Number seven, of course, I was Jadeja, but I felt Akshar adds a lot more value with the bat and. Um, I personally am, like I've always mentioned, I, I am sort of very, very vocal about having batting depth in my 11. So I prefer having, my, uh, I prefer my number seven adding more value with the bat than the ball, given that I have enough potent bowling options. So Akshar at seven, and then eight, nine, ten, eleven, I've got Rashid Khan, Jaspreet Bumrah, Mitchell Stark, and Bhuvi. Yep, there you go. So Rashid and Bumrah, again, like I said earlier, pick themselves. Bhuvi, for the kind of player he's been in the IPL, great value with the new ball. Can also bowl at the death if needed. Can also bowl in the middle overs, you know, based on how good he's bowling. So, that's why I've stuck to Bhuvi. Mitchell Stark, I know the jury's still out, like Dan mentioned, when it comes to the IPL. Because it's been, what, nine years since he last played in the IPL. But you would imagine someone like him, someone of Mitchell Stark's uh, caliber would come good here. Especially against the domestic, uh, you know, batters. Given that left-arm angle and the consistency with which he can sort of bowl the searing Yorkers. So, I would back him to come good in the IPL. Um, a slightly left-field choice for my impact play, I've gone with uh, Varun Chakravarti. To be honest, um, I mean, as much as I hate using the word, but I'd have to say he's been fairly underrated. He's gone under the radar. He's been phenomenal. He was really good last season. Very, very, very consistent beat, you know, uh, in terms of limiting run flow, in terms of taking wickets when his side needed. Um, my mind, of course, goes back to that KKR SRS game that decided somehow managed to bottle. If you guys remember, 35 needed in five overs that they somehow managed to botch it up. Um, CV Varun, of course, played a big role in, in, in defending that. But uh, other than that as well, he's been a great, great, great uh, support to Sunil Narayan, especially given that how teams have figured, ki boss, let's just play Narayan out. Let's ensure that we don't lose our wickets to Narayan and we can, you know, tackle uh, KKR spaces and all of that. Given this, it was important for KKR to come up with some, uh, some more attacking options. And Varun's really done that with great aplomb, according to me. So, yeah, that's that's why I've gone ahead with him. Gives me variety when it comes to my spin attack. Gives me variety when it comes to my pace attack. Bumbra, Stark and Bhuvneshwar Kumar pretty much all faces are covered. You've also got the left-arm angle of Stark. Then there's Maxwell with the off-spin. There's Rashid with the wrist-spin. There's Varun Chakravarti with a bit of mystery spin. Akshar Padil, of course, with, with a bit of slow left-arm. So, all bases covered. So, yeah, all in all, I feel this, this would sort of be as yeah a, a fairly competent side. Okay, a lot of thought applied into that Levin. Many people are saying there's a Kohli bias over there. Just wait and watch what we have in our Levins. Uh, so I'll be polite and let Nick's go next. And then me and Dan will have our turns last. So Nick's, make uh, what you want of your Levin. Because uh, again, you've got the superstars in your particular lineup. They all are in their own regard. But some interesting yeah. names as well. Tell me why. Yeah, I think the top four, five, six, seven, probably eight are going to be there in most of the sites. And yeah. you can't really not play them as well, given the form also of Klassen. Uh, and Maxwell, again, for RCBs, really come good in terms of consistently getting them great starts. Uh, Kohli, because I expect him to be very, very eager and squash all the nonsense that's around of you know him, adaptability and all of that. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. Uh, the one name that I think probably stands out for many was is Sai Kisho. Uh, I think Shami's injury will probably free up a spot for him, for him to have hopefully, hopefully, this is the season where he gets all the 14 and if he qualifies a few more games, because then he could he can really come into his own. Uh, in a World Cup where you know Jadeja, sometimes you're not always sure of Aksar Patel's wicket taking form has been a bit off. Now, if Sai Kushur can have a great IPL, that would really just put the competition on fire. So, uh, I think Bumrah and Azib, again, they probably picked themselves. So, I think the only bone of contention for me, there was the left arm spin. And I went with Sai there. And uh, for the impact player, because I, I, I'm an, we are all Australian fans. So, I'm taking care of Stark's workload by making him the impact player. That rest, uh, uh, be around cotton wool and just come in bowl four and then, yeah, done. So, I think that's pretty much a very fairly straightforward 11. It is, it is. And there's some names which clash, of course, in my 11 with Akshay's 11 as well. But let's get Dan's 11 on. And Dan, I want you to talk me through your 11 right now. Because if you look at it, very interesting picks away from uh, you as well. And all of you all have Heinrich Klassen in your 11. Do you guys really think that he's going to light it up? Yeah. So, I, I think there's six or seven uh, names which should be consistent. 
along each of our teams so far. And it's really fascinating because I think we've all gone quite role role specific and yeah. we've gone for a left arm orthodox. We've gone for the Maxwell matchup option as an off spinner. And we've all gone for Rashid Khan as well as as, as the world class leg spinner. So we've got all bases covered with our spin. I I, I mixed up the um the batting order a little bit slightly because I wanted to get two left handers into the top four. So un- unfortunately, that meant Sir Kamal was the impact sub rather than rather than actually in the side. But but if you look at that, it, it's it's a team that I think would play spin exceptionally well as well in 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 the middle overs with the three four five and 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 then you've got the the finishing strength of Rinky Singh whose numbers against pace are unbelievable and then you've got really nice depth as well with with Hardik Pandya, uh, Jadeja and Rashid Khan all very capable of uh, of uh, some quick runs down the order as well. So we back deep. We've got a lot of bowling options, and I th- and I think I think that the stability wise as well with the, with Shubman Gill and Jaiswal, we've we've got the um, good starts hopefully assured as well. I just want to ask you about one particular player on your eleven, which Nick's and Nikhil didn't have him. I don't have him, in fact, and that's the new MI skipper, the old MI player, Hardik Pandya. How do you think he's going to feature? Because we saw him, of course, adopt that anchor role when he took on the GT captaincy. We saw him bat at three and four, but I don't think there's going to be an opportunity to bat that higher up for MI. How do you think he'll all play out for Hardik Pandya, Dan? I think that's a really good question and really tough to answer, actually, right now, because we don't know really how much he's going to be able to bowl in this tournament so far, in, especially you know, it's a bit of an intangible. So I think that it shouldn't be like this, but it often is in cricket, is that the the w- workload of a batter is often determined by their how much they're able to bowl. So I think if he doesn't bowl much, he might try and push to be higher up the order um but but yeah i think i i think that he can play a more explosive style still which he's shown that in recent years i think at gt it was a little bit different is the the fact that he was had more responsibility was in terms of captaining a new team i think at mumbai hopefully for him and hopefully for mumbai he'll be able to rediscover his best with the bat because uh he's kind of gone back home if you like Interesting over there. Um, I mean, and lots of people pouring in their comments and loving your Levin and no surprises for that because you do have a power packed one indeed. Now, I don't know where Akshay Kumar Swami has disappeared. I'm guessing there's a power shortage in Vijayanagar, wherever he is, but we'll try to get back to him. Meanwhile, what have I cooked up for my Levin, guys? Because I'm not talking tactics, no matchups, just your <laughs> gut feel. Honestly, it was not a last minute scribble, but this is my Levin. Now, I've gone for familiar names. Obviously, I'm not going to not have Virat Kohli because what's the point of what's in the IPL if Virat's not there? So, Virat's there. Gil's there because I think he'll really do well uh, and continue donning that particular role. Sanju Samson, I feel like it's high time that he has a really breathtaking IPL. I think this could be the one Dan said that Arad could potentially win the tournament. So, Sanju will play a huge part. Then I've gone for my RCB boys in Maxwell and Green thinking that they'll do something. Uh, with that. And then there's MS Dhoni. Now, why have I added MS Dhoni? I genuinely feel here's a man who won the IPL last year with a bang average bowling attack. And you talk about the impact he has in the game, even with his wicket keeping skills, it's ridiculous. Even with the fine angles that he creates in the field, it's ridiculous. He got, I think, Chuban Gill stumped in that final. And look how much he saved. So it's not just about MS Dhoni with the bat and retro MSD, which is coming in at four and five and talking in and having cameos. I'm talking about different things. Nix, is it just me or you or the seminal? <laughs> but everyone's come back right now. Going back to my 11 then, I essentially feel a Jadeja, obviously, you know me, if Akshay's going to feature an Aksh, <laughs> Akshay's 11, Jadeja's featuring in mine for sure. Rashid Khan, you cannot not have him in any T20 11, so he's in it. Patirana is my purple cap winner, so he's in it. And then I've gone for Arshdeep and Bumrah who also features in all of the four boys' 11. Right, we'll try to get Akshay on as well uh, and see if we can uh, reconnect with him and Dan in just a bit. I think Dan's, um, yeah, sketchy because I'm guessing uh, there is some little Wi-Fi problems in his car. Just coming back to uh, wrap up proceedings on this ML with Dan. Uh, Dan, I just want to ask you all a couple of questions. But before that, Akshay and Nikhil have some fantastic ones lined up themselves. Boys, who's going first? Keep it short because I'm taking a couple of ones from the chat as well. Akshay? 
Oh man, when it comes to the data, I, I, for one, I'm a huge sucker for data and cricket. Like, Avni saying keeping it short does not help me one bit. Uh, hit the performance pressure, but okay. I have a couple of questions off the top of my head, Dan. IPR, we know off late has evolved a lot more. Teams have started using data a lot more, and you know there are a couple of comments related to that. My question in particular to, to you is. Where do you think is IPL right now? Do you still think data is in its nascency, not just IPL, sorry, when it comes to data usage in cricket? Because uh, you've spoken time and time again about, you know, baseball and how they use data and mm. how a lot of it has to do with data becoming open source. So a lot of people have access to the data over there uh, uh, and which sort of makes it easier, you know, for sort of any Tom, Dick and Harry to try and analyze, to to put it very simply, not the case with uh, cricket, you know, the lot of gatekeepers, which means access to data is not, not that easy. So given that, where do you think is data in cricket and, and the way data is used in the sport right now? It's such a good question and, and a really difficult one to answer quite quickly, but but I'll give my best shot. Um, so so I agree with everything that you've said, really, in terms of, you know, the gatekeepers and, and how how perhaps in the infancy data in cricket is compared to, say, American sports and maybe even English Premier League soccer, for example, as well. Uh, I think I think I have hopes that it will it will change. I think that what, what we really need now is for a data driven team to to in the IPL to almost like moneyball it a bit like uh, uh, the Oakland Athletics on baseball and have that story. And then the other thing I think as well is that at the moment, there's not really that much jeopardy in leagues in terms of, you know, Premier League soccer. If you if you come in the bottom three, you get relegated, and and a, that has a massive impact on your in your club, in terms of the television revenue uh, and the ability to pay your players' salaries and things like that. You don't have that in cricket, and, and I think that that if you did, it would focus minds a lot more. Maybe you're looking at the IPL expansion and you think wow, could there be 16 or 20 teams with two divisions of eight and two divisions of 10? Promotion, relegation, wouldn't that be incredible? I don't think it will happen, but I think it would be incredible. And I think it would really focus minds to accelerate that analytics side of things in, in cricket. Um, but at the moment, there's not really a huge incentive for teams to, because their brand value is increasing year on year, regardless of, the, of their results, really. Okay, interesting. Uh, next, what do you have for Dan? Because I know uh, it's great for an analyst to talk to an analyst, and I'm very curious about your question, Nick. So, what do you have for him? No, no I'm going to spare Dan the questions on Punjab. Uh, this one, this one is going to be on uh, because we've all heard Dan have his, uh, I don't know, love, uh, so to say. But Dan, uh, first, it's great to be sharing space with you uh, for SRH. You've known, you know, the side. You followed them as well. They've made a few purchases that have a haul had us scrambling. That how do they now fit in their four overseas guys? Mm. Now, if, if if you are the ones who are suggesting, again, we are just saying suggesting, who would be the four that you'd suggest the side to pick? That's again a really a really good question. First of all, I wanted to say, uh, yeah, great work on picking Psycho Shaw for your your ultimate eleven as well. Because I mean, Thank this is an absolute absolute travesty that this guy doesn't play game in yeah. game out every season in the IPL. Uh, and, and I really hope that he does get those opportunities this year. Nope. Um, in terms of the SRH combos, obviously, I know head coach Dan Vittori um, quite well. I've worked with him in England for, for three or four years now. Um, so I think he'll bring he'll bring out here a, a lot of calmness to the group. And, and he's quite a, quite a laid back character. And I think that, that maybe away from the IPL, being away from the IPL sort of stressful environment for players would be quite, quite good for him to have that calming influence. Um, in terms of my overseas guys, well, obviously we're going to have to choose Pat Cummins as number one because he's captain. Um, I I'm definitely going to pick a one and do because one, I think that possibly that was the biggest steal, not just of this auction but of a lot of auctions before. Base price one point five CR, uh, incredible, incredible. Um, uh, uh, for for an all rounder who whose batting is massively improving. And is an absolute gun fielder as well. So, so for me, one of the Hasaranga, especially given the questionable spin options, I think at SRH really, really does fit the the gap in terms of covering that skill set. Um, I would definitely pick Heinrich Klaassen because uh, I think he's probably the informed batter in the world right now, uh, and I think that it's it's really difficult to make a case for him not being in the eleven. And then from there, you've got the really got five other guys who will all have 
a case or will be confident or should be confident of playing. I think it's really tough uh, for for a pacer, although I, I absolutely love Faruqi. I think he, he really is he really is a, a, a exceptional talent. I, I feel that they will probably go with Travis Head um, because I, I just... He he's been he was a bit of a more a big big name purchase at the auction. I think he'll probably get the initial start. It wouldn't be surprising for me if if Markram didn't start because obviously with the captaincy being taken away from him as well, I presumably that was some factor as to whether he would actually start games or not. So I, I think I would probably lean towards them going with a head class and Hasaranga and um Oh, I've forgotten the last one now. Um, sorry, head. <laughs> uh, head. Uh, head Hasaranga, uh, yeah, Clarkson, uh, and the, the captain, the, the captain, Huggins, of course, the of captain. course. Yeah, <laughs> Aman quickly saying no, Marco Janssen. Yeah, I mean, Marco Janssen as well is like an absolute class player. He's, I think, his death bowling requires a little bit of, of, of experience still, but it's improving and his batting's definitely getting better as well. I think there's a huge case for that, but I mean, who. Who do you leave out? I mean, that's and that's the biggest problem. I think that if you if you if you don't pick uh, Travis Head and you go more bowling strong with your overseas combinations, uh, you're 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 relying on a lot more from from that domestic group. You're going to have to give Samad a, a really a big opportunity as well. Will Will uh, Man Kagawal have a good year after some struggles recently? The, these are all considerations, I think, and and. I think if if you look at their squad in depth, it's arguably one of the strongest squads overall. But you can't play eight overseas in your starting eleven. <laughs> I'm sure they wish they could. No, indeed. I mean, SRH look an absolute uh, team to contend with this year. Dan, before we let you go, just a couple of quick ones, if you can answer the fans, because they've had a plethora of questions. We'll select the best ones and cherry pick cool. them right now. Um, Noodle Hacks with Vasan saying, hey, Dan, do you feel GT can be the same without Shami? It's a point that Nick's mentioned as well with inclusion of Sai Kishore. How do you think they'll fill in that void? No more much Shami. That's so difficult because I think ultimately, I mean, if, if you're looking at uh, power play bowlers, Bumrah probably leads the way in terms of economy and Mohamed Shami is the overall package, I think, really, when you're taking into account wicket taking as well. And power play bowling is a really key uh, driver of success for T20 teams. And losing arguably the premier power play bowler in the whole competition is not going to be good for GT. Yes, maybe it does give them this opportunity to, to play side for sure, but obviously they're very different types of players, very different roles in the team. I, I think actually... And an on-form Mohamed Shami, for, if you play him in the right role, so you get him bowling up front rather than the death, I think he's largely ir- irreplaceable right now. Okay, and a final one, uh, because Darshan asking, Hi Dan, who's someone who's not in the IPL this year who you really wish was? Oh, that's a great question. Um, look, I think that the, the, there's certainly the, the pickups in recent times in terms of injury replacements I mean that you know someone like a Phil Salt, who I think was really harshly done by not getting picked up in the in the initial auction, probably actually pretty harshly done by not to be retained by DC to start with. Um, he he was obviously one, but obviously now he's got a replacement deal. Um, I'm going to go with my man from England actually, um, and and he was it was at Punjab Kings in 2022, and I, I think it's actually a real shame that we've never seen the talents of Benny Howell at the at the, at the top level. Um, because was there was there ever any doubt in that never. man's ability to make? Yeah, I was I was going to say that it has to be Benny Howe. Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine him if he played for CSK at Chapork on quite some quite slow pitches? He'd wreak havoc. I really I really do think that. And uh, and and his batting is is very very strong. I think he got got three man the matches recently in Bangladesh Premier League as well. And like, as an all round package, good fielder, uh, excellent runner between the wickets. Not going to be expensive in the auction. I, I just, I just think it's a no-brainer. And the fact that he never played for the, in the IPL and he never, never played for England in the international either. I just think it's a real shame. Great guy as well. Yeah, I think you're secretly his agent, aren't you? <laughs> no, he, he was messaging me the other day, but he never messaged about that. <laughs> but Dan, look, I mean, that's a fantastic little bit of insight you've given us in the last 20 minutes. Really, really appreciate your time, Dan. And thank you so much for making your presence felt in this Monday Night Live podcast. And good things 
happen to people in the driver's seat. So good things will happen to you in this IPL, I'm guessing. Absolutely. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a great week ahead. We've got, I've got the, obviously the IPL starting. I've got the 100 draft on Wednesday as well. I mean, yeah. the weeks don't get much better than this. Okay, super. Good Dan, luck. thank you so much for your time. And Nick and Akshay and the rest of the chat have definitely enjoyed your presence yep. in this Monday light. Uh, Thanks Monday so much light. for having me. Yeah, Monday thank night you. live. Thank you. thank you so much, you Dan. So much. Really, really appreciate it. Brilliant. <laughs> Dan Weston, uh, a forever favorite in terms of the cricket.com community. And why not, indeed? Uh, let's, of course, just one, uh, go just, on. just, well, just one question. Chahal ko pick kiya hai as purple cap, but he's not part of his team. Are Chahal or Rashid ne Rashid batting bhi di to bhi to di. Whatever it is, whatever. That's a very good point that he's observed there because even I pick up people are giving me pelters in the comments. Are I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Mera to my life runs on just one motto. Hypocrisy ki bhi seema hoti hai. Main aisa itna sab dis ho jaa re purple cap usko pick kiya to usko lena padega re. I mean, it's something to debate upon, but look, at the end of the day, if you're liking your content, it's only got to get better right now because we've done with pretty much Dan Weston, but we have another guest joining us this evening and I can't wait to bring her on because it'll probably be the first time we're getting a woman of uh, sorts on our panel in terms of an expert. And we are going to spend the next 10, 15 minutes rating and ranking every IPL jersey. You heard it for first. There's one team which has not released their jersey, and that's a beloved RCB. I have the 2008 jersey here with me. But speaking of which, it's time to introduce, of course, where is she? Where is she? She's there. It is Mansi Chandrasekhar. <laughs> Good to see you. You're going to be playing Fashion Police today with all the jerseys coming out. And first thoughts, Bansi. I mean, I know you're a huge, huge CSK fan, but of course, that Friday game will be RCBs, I'm guessing. Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Don't even think about it. <laughs> all right. And generally, how are things with you? Because you've seen some of the jerseys, you've seen some of the little latest kits come out. Does it give you a little conviction as a fan to buy any of them? A few of them, yes. Um, some of them are actually really well done, really well thought out. Um, the others, not so much. But we'll get into the details and the nitty gritties in just maybe a minute. Okay, fine. Since you're the guest, it's only fair to tell me where you want me to start with regards to which team. Because I know you want CSK last because they're your beloved yellow. So we'll play it that way. And with re regards to RCB and the unbox of it, we don't know what that jersey is. So we also have made so, a tier list. Go on. So RCB is like not applicable today, right? Unfortunately, I don't know how the fans will feel in the comments. Because they're there, a league but... above, right? So that's why. We don't need to worry about them. They've got their jersey sorted. It's okay. Y'all can have the day today. Y'all riding on a, on a high. It's fine. Enjoy your day. Y'all had a great day yesterday. Uh, mad props to the women. Um, but yeah, it's okay. RCB is not in the game tonight. But Friday, we'll, we'll see them. CSK will meet them there. And it's funny that you say that because even Nick, as you can see over there, is definitely in the CSK camp with you. So it's a 50-50 split here on the MNL with regards Finally, to Finally, because you all are such, a, such an RCB-led uh, show. Like every time I log in, it's just <laughs> RCB. Time. So it's great First, to have yeah. CSK with me. First time ever, there is a 50% possibility also on yeah. the panel. So it's 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 great to share that space. Yeah. I logged in last night and it was just RCB fans screaming their heads off. So <laughs> I'm really glad that that's not the case today. But okay, in our right. defense, conscious effort has been made that IPL panelists won't be that way. So guys, again, guys in the comments, please, you don't need to worry about it. But yeah. Okay. And lots of people already backing Mansi with regards to humiliation rally for RCB at Chepok. And yeah. more more fans. Hi, Mansi. I am uh, I'm Siddharth. I'm also a fan of CSK, going on to say. So look, yeah, we, we'll take some of the comments, but I want to put Mansi in the spot here. We'll start alphabet alphabetically apart from CSK. So we'll go for DC then. And mm -hmm. Delhi, what do you make of this jersey? Because it makes me think whether you'll buy it or not at all. So this one is, um, so I'll just start off with the very obvious parts, right? The tiger on the left bottom of the t-shirt is very reminiscent of CSK's lion on the left bottom of the t-shirt, which okay. I'm not a huge fan of. This white stripes is not nice. And I feel like there are too many colors happening, especially with the sponsors and all of that. And uh, the, the little lines with the dots on the jersey reminds me of the Delhi Metro line for some reason. I don't know if that's it, if that was meant to be that way. Uh, but this goes in my absolutely not list because I think it's just not a great jersey. 
in general. They could have done a lot better. Okay, boys, do you agree with her? Because honestly, I know Rishabh Pant makes it look really, really good. Do you like the sponsors? Do you like the little bit of red there? Akshay, I'll come with you here first. Would you buy this jersey? Nah. I mean, again, I wouldn't buy the jersey for obvious reasons. It doesn't have anything to do with the design. I don't think I'd uh, buy them, like I said, for obvious reasons. But interesting, at least, I like the thought they've put behind. So, the lines and all, they're supposed to be... Uh, uh, sort of uh, a replica of uh, the Delhi Metro and all of that, which is supposed to be a lifeline of the average Delhi. So that's a thought put behind it. Uh, I like when they infuse such elements. You know, if, if you remember a couple of years ago, Australia had also done something similar where they had Aboriginal designs and, and yeah. part of their culture included in the jersey. So when there are such elements included, it, it at least makes fans feel uh, a lot more personal about the jersey. So for a Delhiite who supports the Delhi capitals, it seems okay. You know what, boss? Yeah, this is something that I can connect with. So that way, I, I'll, I'll give the props uh, to that. Uh, apart from that, yeah, red and blue is just. I mean, it's like these are the two most obvious colors you can go ahead with. Yeah, but look, kuch to yeah, kuch to na soch lo, kuch to. Like no, I get that. I get that. I, I fully get that. I, I don't like the vibe of that Delhi jersey. But look, who am I to say? We all have our opinions. But Mansi has given hers. Uh, quickly, next, would you? Yeah or nay? Delhi ke liye. Uh, only for Shubh and Rishabh Pan. Uh, so that that's that. But yeah, otherwise, uh, I mean, बहुत ज़्यादा blue or red हो गया यार क्या ही करेंगे? Okay, uh, I don't know where that sits, but we will of course show you our tier list, like Mansi yeah. said earlier. Let's move on to LFC, the franchise we all love the most, of course, being RCB fans. Mansi, what do you make of this? Because the left is the training kit, as you can see, and the right is the jersey that they played in last year, which will be similar. But there's too much happening. There's black, there's orange, there's that all right blue. What do you feel? So, um, I'm not going to look at the training kit because I don't think that's, I, I don't think we should be rating that. But if I look at just the jersey, like you said, I agree. I think there are too, too much, there's too much happening. There's a lot of colors, especially, you know, with the black and then the pattern coming in with the black, the orange, uh, uh, you know, highlights here and there. Um, I think what bothers me the most, though, is the the green ply, uh, you know, a print up there. I think it's really distracting. It takes away from the entire jersey. And I think it could have just been a cool jersey if they had stuck to a few colors. Uh, but yeah, this one's also this one's in a, in, a, in the maybe list. It's not as bad as the DC one because I still like the combination of the blue and the orange. But it's in the maybe list. It's neither here nor there. Interesting. I generally feel like the LSG put out another jersey last year for that Mohan Bagan, the red one. But they're going to be predominantly playing with the blue over here. Uh, when it first came out, you remember the first LSG jersey, I think in 2022 it was, when they got introduced to the IPL. It was pretty much everyone taking the mickey out of it, saying it looks like in a nighty, it looks weird, it looks neonic. But I'm guessing LSG fans, you can have your opinions as well. Right, time to move on to... Team number three then, KKR this evening. And this was, of course, theirs, Mansi. Purple. And purple is not a color that you normally associate with sports teams all over the world, barring maybe a few NBA teams, of course. But what do you make of this? And do you like the whole big Dream 11 accommodating so much space on that particular jersey? You know, so uh, when I saw this one, I was actually kind of trying to figure out what that, what the yellow or the gold... Uh, the, the namaste kind of thing is. I was I tried to look up the Hara Bridge to see if that's what it's representing. Um, it didn't seem like it. It's it's an all right jersey. Uh, like you said, I think it's cool that someone's going with the purple. I, I, I agree that we haven't seen a lot of purple in the sports space before. Uh, but again, for me, it's a maybe. Also, I think maybe I'm a little biased because uh, KKR has been a CSK rival for the longest time. <laughs> um, so it's I'm just going to put it in the maybe category because... Guys, I'm not going to be unbiased here, okay? Like, there is going to be a heavy <laughs> sense of bias. And no you know, part of a they're, they are, they are used to being biased. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, KKR goes in the maybe category for me. Okay. Akshay, would you buy this jersey, the KKR jersey? Because Korbo, Lodbo, Jeetbo. But Baibo, would you buy Bo this? Is that a word? <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. That's bad even by your standards. But... Um, yeah, that, that's a maybe for me. Uh, at least what I like is the way they've sort of uh, infused the sponsors. So for me, when it comes to uh, IPL jerseys, one pet peeve of mine is, is the way the principal sponsors usually sort of, you know, integrated into the jersey. So Dream 11, this way at least it, it seems a lot more sort of, you know, uh, 
pleasant to the eye. Not the case with LSD. For example, the my 11th circle has a white background of its own. So that's that's very jarring to me. I, I usually prefer when it's just the text that's being incorporated into the jersey and not the background as well. Something what uh, Mansi mentioned about the yellow and green yeah. of green pack because they have a different background. That's what makes it sort of stand out unnecessarily. Uh, thankfully, with Dream 11, earlier they used to have a background, a, a, a different color background, not to be the case this time. So, yeah, that's what makes it a lot more presentable. But would I buy it? No. Purple color, definitely different. So, that way, yeah, good, good on them for using a different color. And I'm no one to slander bloody brands, but I just don't feel comfortable wearing a Lux Cozy on my jersey, Nick. I don't know how you feel with regards to that literally being evident as well, bhai. I mean, thoda sa form kam, kam karna chahiye, na? At least they match the yellow with the, the Namaste thing on the jersey. So, I guess that works. <laughs> Yeah, I think they've been very smart with the ink color selection. Ke bhai, patch to dal rahe hum, uh, for the yellow, but at least she's matching. And see, Lux Cozy, it's a very crucial thing. It says, Apna Lux pen ke chalo, if you know the brand line. <laughs> so I would always want to have that luck with me, uh, especially for my fantasy tips. And uh, the one KKI jersey that I'd always buy is the original black and gold one. I don't think we've Whoa. ever come close to any other jersey, even coming close to that as in terms of design. Yeah, I agree. I think Aman resonates with his thoughts. Yeah. Uh, Kikia's old black and gold jersey that, that was Manish Malhotra, right? Uh, it was Manish Arora. Arora. Oh, okay. Wow. Manish oh, Manish. Arora. Arora actually did the. I don't know if you all remember. Reebok had this fish fry uh, collection back in the day. This was two thousand six, seven. So I think those are the same guys, if I'm not wrong, um, who designed the KKR, the first KKR jersey. Okay, Kushal also saying. It would be a collection as well. Okay, I'm really sorry. It's very interesting collection. You all should look it up. We, should, we will. Um, KKR Jersey average saying Chikuji. Chikuji is also saying Mansi, you look like Spriti Mandana. I don't know if you take that as compliment or however you want to perceive I it. That, I get that a lot. Um, so, one of the brands that I work with, uh, Smithy, is our brand ambassador. So, we have a huge hoarding of her in the office, mm -hmm. and I have people come to me every single day. Um, saying I look like her. So I'm actually very used to that compliment. Amazing. Right, let's move on to team number five we want to discuss. And it is a lot of you lovers of the MI franchise. Now, talk to me about the blue and gold and a little bit of arrows and all of that. I'm not really, really perturbed about the main sponsor slice. But first impressions, Vansi? I think this has to be one of um, the best jerseys. And I'll tell you why. Um, if you look closely onto the pattern, right? I don't know how many of you all have uh, been to Mumbai and you know looked closely at the architecture, but Mumbai has a huge Art Deco scene. So the pattern on the jersey actually reminds me of the Art Deco scene. Um, and also, if you notice, this one's the only jersey that has a zipper. None of the other jerseys have a zipper, which I think is really cool. Um, it's a concealed zipper, and I think I'm assuming, you know, it's probably more comfortable and of probably a better quality as well. Um, and, you know, blue and gold, you can't go wrong with that combination. It's I, I like that they stuck to a few colors um, with the jersey in terms of even the sponsor, sponsorship brands and all of that. So I think this is one of my favorites. So it goes in my definitely buying it list. Okay, interesting. I don't know if the boys resonate with that because obviously we're talking to RCB fan and CSK fans and it's rival. So I'd probably use that as poacher in my house. With all due respect, don't target me. Please don't target me. See, I'll just agree with one thing that Mansi said. Mumbai do have a lot of things to zip up. So, they definitely <laughs> need the zipper. Yeah, they need the wow. zipper. Wow. CSK and RCB fans not holding back in Mumbai. But look, there are lots of Mumbai fans as you can see. It's a good jersey. Yeah, that's, that's, I agree with you. Yeah. Do, do they have a zipper in the trousers too? I'm guessing so, man. I, I don't know if there is... No, no. You, no, of course they wouldn't have zippers in their trousers. Saeed, Saeed, the pocket will be for the pocket. Obviously not... Yeah, yeah, sure. Why would they do it? Again? Yeah. Yeah, sports jerseys. No, they wouldn't. I haven't seen any. Yeah. Okay, fair but enough. even I'm a fan of zippers in my jerseys. Like um, yeah. uh, RCB in 2013 and 14 also had that uh, design. Uh, unfortunately, they decided to you know go past it. But yeah, I, I, I am a fan of that. Okay, and Pratula Benavu quickly is going on to say that at least we have five trophies in our pockets. CSK fans also do. And Darshan saying, are CSK fans allowed to buy MI merch? Obviously not. Like yeah. Cardinal City. It's like asking a Real Madrid fan to buy a Barcelona jersey. It's never going to happen in 
life. Right, time to talk about Gujarat Titans who will play Mumbai Indians in that opening weekend. We'll be doing a watch along for it. Uh, I don't know whether Mansi will join us for that watch along, but she can definitely, definitely tell us about GT's jersey. Mansi, what do you feel about this? Again, yet another Dream 11 um, title sponsor. Is Shubhan Gill just making it look cool? Um, he's trying for sure. <laughs> um, I honestly I can't see the jersey properly, so I, I'm not. I haven't been able to judge this very well. But I think again, it's it's a it's a navy and uh, yellow gold ochre combination. Can't go wrong with it. Um, in terms of sponsorships, again, Dream Eleven. I don't think you have a choice with those. I don't think you have a yeah. choice with uh, how it looks. But I think what I like is that they've stuck to simple colors. It's blue, yeah. uh, gold, yellow, whatever, and white. And it just, it's a clean, neat jersey. Nothing fancy, nothing great about it. So again, probably goes in my maybe list. Nothing so exciting feature. about it. Okay, okay. So it doesn't feature in the top tier. I uh, just want to get quickly a boy's opinions about this. I mean, essentially, I saw a lot of people wear the Gujarat Titans jersey generally. I'm guessing because of the colors, guys, because like Marcy touched upon over there. But would you even recommend it to, say, someone else? Akshay, if you had to really go on an Amazon one day and just buy a Gujarat Titans jersey for someone, would you even do that? Or do you think it looks absolutely shit? No, to be honest, for some reason, I do have a soft corner uh, for this jersey. I don't know if it's the design that works for me or the colours. But um, Aether sort of had a better ring to it in terms of how it looked visually. Last year, they had Aether. Dream 11, Aether, I mean, every team, yaar. Punjab, Kolkata, uh, GT, and there's one with it. The, and uh, yeah, SRH. Given that, it just sort of makes it very, 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 you know, common. Uh, Aether, because it was the only team being sponsored by Aether, also gave that, you know, unique mesh to it in, in some sense. But yeah, it's still not the worst of jerseys for sure. Okay, interesting. Time to move on to more jerseys then, because we have still uh, three more to show you. And we can only speculate how cool RCB's jersey is going to be. If you know, you know. SRH <laughs> then. Uh, and look at Bhubnesh Kumar, Mats. You must be proud of this man just trying to be a right fashion model. And what do you make of this orange and black? They say orange is the new black. But surely this is not. Orange is the new khichdi. Like, what is happening <laughs> here? Like, it, it just, you know, when I saw this first, it looked like a rejected design for like a bingo mad angles chips packet. Like, it's just awful. It is awful. I don't know who designed this. Did someone get paid for this? Was this, was this like a free end, like job? I don't know. It was really bad. Um, and you know what's ironic about it? Uh, they have a side stripe on the track pad as well, which is the same print. Um, and the the sponsorship says stylish on it, which is so ironic. It's so sad. And uh, But Bhuvaneshwar Kumar is trying, poor thing, with his hazel eyes. Uh, he's really trying there. But you can tell he's not comfortable in it. It's awful. This one is absolutely uh, not. No, you're spot on with the analysis. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of the uh, Flintstones, the good old cartoon show, the Flintstones. Because if you look closely, it's almost like Bhuvanesh Kumar is the Fred Flintstone in the modern day era. Obviously, the Fred Flintstone had that half sleeve, whatever thingy. But you spotted the pants over there. The pants, like, I wouldn't mind buying, you know. It's just black, maybe just for a run close it's by. It's not just car. black. The side stripe has the Bingo <laughs> Mad Apple's rejected design on it. Just saying. But but Mati, I don't know if you follow the SA20. They use a similar concept jersey for the Sunrise Eastern Cape. They thought this could bring, potentially bring them luck. But surely it doesn't bring them aesthetics, though. That's really unfortunate. If, if, if that's <laughs> yeah, like how is that a justification people are using? I remember when Nikhil Bhai said this last seminal, the justification was that was SA20 said yes. So what gave you the right to use one place, if you use one place, then you use it in another place. And also one more thing, once again, just going back to how the principal sponsor comes across. Again, because they've gone with a black background, it just doesn't sort of go in. Like, ideally, if they were smart enough that Ekta, this design just makes no sense. What are you trying to say with it? Like, this seems... I can't, I can't even explain what this is. I mean, the design is... The design is basically five overseas, six, seven overseas players will be put up in that mad angle sky, you know, stable form. And then they have to trace. Okay, Joe trace pehle aega, wo cha overseas that's killing. You know what they no, could do with this? this actually, they, they could uh -huh. actually sell like coloring books with that pattern for people who have like stress and stuff. It probably help people de-stress. I don't know. Looking at that, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. I don't know how people feel about it. But they could probably use it to their advantage. We don't know. It's really awful. 
I have nothing else to say about this jersey. There is a, there is another comment from Darshan. I think that that comment just sums up. You know, funny that the thing that they came from Estendi was the jersey and not the captain. So. <laughs> Indeed, no, lots of people the have their own thing. For them, that is the color, like the the, the ah. shade of orange they have is actually different, yeah. and they could have actually done something with it. Actually, to be honest, uh, SRA's jersey in 2022 wasn't the worst. It was pretty interesting. They also had orange trousers, uh, unlike uh, the black trousers they usually went for, and that actually gave them a very very different look and feel. But yeah, this is just IPL teams being IPL teams. Just don't know what to do with design. They're like, boys, huh? And it's not about the name. Yeah, I mean, Kajaria Tai's name, name acha nahi hoga, but the way they've infused it in the jersey, uske baare mein baat chal rahi hai, Tum Kajaria lo, tum Lakskozi lo, naam se kya hai karna hai, saare, matlab, kya hai farak pata. It's about how you integrate it into the jersey that matters, but sure. Yeah, you can never forget how RCB had cycle a garbati and hero cycles and they're bloody... <laughs> Done all those years ago, indeed. Right, time to move on to, of course, brighter things. And I say that because this is certainly going to blind you. So bear with us. Do not, of course, shut off your screens. I'm talking about, oh, oh my God, I've lost my eyesight. Punjab Kings and Mansi. I mean, it says Sada Punjab, but it's all, I, I was going to, I'm not going to say that joke. So, but what do you think about this jersey, honestly? First thought. <laughs> I'm glad you, you kept that joke to yourself, Abnish. I'm really happy about it. Uh, <laughs> But, you know what this this jersey actually reminds me of you know when you uh, when you got a mac back in the day and you could you switched on photo booth and you had that thermal camera on it that's what this jersey reminds me of like i don't know who what are people thinking i don't get it and i'm hoping that like the fire ember kind of pattern is representing fire in the belly maybe and let's hope the team has some fire in their bellies when they play but uh, as for the jersey i don't think the designer had any fire in his belly um so this one's an absolutely not for me just not yeah. by I, I like the comparison of how you've just said that it almost looks like a heat map that we kind of look at football analysts kind of show every time a game is done and you can see how even there's too much happening there at the top and then there's two empty kind of happening at the bottom. The bottom kind of, you know, if you look at any of these kind of iodex ad, deep paint, spray relief, it honestly kind of resembles one of those, you know what I mean? Like just yellow and a heat vibe, like one of those Bengay commercials. Akshay, Punjab Kings, PBKS. Okay, again, another joke that I'll leave. Sorry. Hey, first, I know, I know. That's why don't you never say it out loud. You never say PBKS out loud. <laughs> But I genuinely feel Mansi has added two, three additional layers of logic that their designers <laughs> I don't think they were thinking of, you know, fire in the belly. Nahi. They're like red, akela, plain, lag raha hai, bhai, kuch aur color dal dena maa pe. Kaunsa achcha dikega, chari, yeah, bhai, shayad, kuch achcha lagta hai, dal do. Ah, that's it, that's it. And uh, what makes it even more worse is the fact that they've gone for blue trousers. This is being paired with blue trousers, not red trousers. I don't know if Mansi or Nikhil or Avnish have seen the full setup, full get up. Avnish, check the full ensemble. It's so bad because this with blue, blue trousers. Uh, I saw that. I saw that. And it just makes you think if, if Shikha Dhawan again is going to do an Instagram reel with any of the West Indian cricketers there with that and all of that. If you guys know, you know. But PBKS, I, I think they're definitely at the top of uh the shittiest jersey over there. Maybe SRH will compete with them. Right. Time to move on to, of course... Uh, the penultimate team here with regards to the MNL rating and ranking jerseys by 2024. And there's RR, who, of course, Dan said at the top of the show could win the goddamn competition. Mansi, come in here and talk to me about the right kit, which is the match kit, and the left kit is that one off impact jersey, which is also pretty cool. So, what do you like? This is one of my favorite jerseys uh, of the season, I think, because. First of all, if you look at the matte jersey, I think the pink and the navy really complement each other. I think beautiful colors. And this is probably the only team that's incorporated something from their state into their jersey, which is the Bandini pattern, right? I'm Correct me if I'm wrong. And I think um, the left, the impact jersey, if I'm, uh, the impact matte jersey, if I'm not wrong, they've incorporated names of women who've, uh, you know, who've uh, brought in change in rural Rajasthan through the Rajasthan Royals Foundation. I think that's a very, very cool initiative. Um, similar to what, uh, you know, RCP is the RCP is done with their green jersey and all of that. But this is one of my favorites. I think the addition of the culture, like the cultural significance of fabric, ba print, the bandhani, um, the colors, and generally, you know, incorporating the sponsor names, um, 
you know, in, in similar color tones, white, navy, uh, of course, there's Red Bull, but that kind of goes with the Geo on the other side. Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorites. I think definitely one of the top jerseys, definitely buying. Okay, I mean, I generally feel like uh, maybe the Luminous could have just been in a smaller pot, but again, that's me being nitpicky. It's pink, and it's not that we often see pink in cricket. Of course, South Africa do have that um, game that they play in ODIs and T20s at home. But what do you make of it, Akshay? And then I'll come to Nick's about Rajasthan's jersey. Yeah, for me, it's the font that that doesn't uh, sort of really sort of hit 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 home. Uh, it's it's not just the size; it's also the font style that they've gone for. It's very basic. Like this is probably the first font style they they looked at, and they're like, "Ha, ठीक है, इसी के साथ आगे बढ़ते हैं." Also, why I don't uh, like this aspect. Sorry to interrupt, Akshay. I just want to ask: do, do I don't think the they would have a choice, right? The teams would have a choice because if that's how the branding yeah. is. Yeah. The product, you can't help it. They could probably play with this size, but I'm assuming yeah. the size of the font also comes with a lot of money. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. Then in that case, they should, yeah. yeah, it's a good they point. They should have then sort of, sort of, yeah, lowered the size or something like that. Because uh, for me, Adar's uh, best jersey ever would be their 2021 20 jersey. If I'm not wrong, again, pink and blue. They also had these bunny patterns then as well. They had this pink and blue influ infusion that looked so cool i genuinely uh, sort of contemplated buying it uh, unfortunately they never really released it on sale it was covid and all of that this i don't know like the shade of pink is, is a bit too jarring for me it's a bit too dark and also again i sound like i'm some fashion designer bhai main to khud but at the risk of sounding obnoxious uh, but ha mere ko thoda pata nahi kuch zyada hi dark ho gaya i felt they could have uh, yeah i don't know I, i it didn't work for me personally to be honest trust Next. me again the green on the field will actually look really nice this pink And if you think it's too jarring, you can go for the S R H one. <laughs> the the oh. most popular jersey in the the whole league this year. <laughs> okay, uh, Aman also going on to say Luminous is big but good. It has less brands overall. Next, uh, we've seen so many R R jerseys, right? The ones that I really liked was that training kit when Dravid was still around. The Floriana with Warn and Ralph Dravid. I don't know how many yeah. of you all remember it. It was fluorescent. I know that was obnoxious by itself, but it was really really cool. How much do you rate this jersey from your perspective? Yeah, I think I agree with the uh, comments that Mansi made. It's it's far more neat, and you can see what they're wanting to do with it. So uh, again, it's not like sticker chip ka hai pachas. So that is also good. You and again, I completely agree with the point that it looks great on the field. uh and that i think it's 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 a very good thing in terms of so rr and mi are probably the two jerseys who will look very good on the field because they're just that bright and lot less stickers and just more plain good design okay i think greg came up with a cheeky comment saying at least they can look very pretty while losing <laughs> and new relax with us and saying i love the 2014 yeah. and rr the most i agree with that as well i'll yeah, text men synonymous with rr indeed right uh, so that's what we've of course Gain in the last 20 minutes in terms of just picking Mansi's mindset about these particular jerseys. I just want to see what she's finally conjured up for a tier list. We missed list. the most important one. We missed the most important one. <laughs> ah, I wanted to know if she was paying attention. Right, so time to get CSK and all you lovely yellow fans out there because Tala, without him, what is your franchise? Right, the army look. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Uh, talk to me, Mansi. This is my favorite, guys. I have nothing to say with the number <laughs> seven at the back. Um, the yellow is bright, looks great on field. Um, everyone looks good in it. I mean, I'm sure Nick's will agree, right? Yeah, it's not even a debate. For once, yeah. let them be. Let them be quiet. It's okay. It's great. Martin, you also think the color yellow is a little bit lucky with regards to how teams have actually had success in the sporting world. You look at Australia immediately, the LA Lakers, Chennai Super Kings themselves doing well. And do you think it's a Chennai color? I know it's your personal favorite color. Don't ask me how, but essentially, do you think Chennai have always stuck to yellow from day one and they've never budged? Why is that? Um, I think it's the heat. I think the jersey just reminds them of the heat. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know, but um, I love the color, man. I think it's so bright and it's so beautiful. And obviously, it's a personal favorite as well. Yellow is my favorite color. Um, and I think with the addition of the army, you know, patches on the shoulders as well as the on the collar, I think it just adds that little something to it. Um, and this is obviously me being biased, but it's the best. And and. Is, Is it, sorry, but is this also the only other 
team that has an international sponsorship? Ah, uh, Qatar Airways. Hello, hello. Uh, I mean, but you, you, you guys are literally uh, riding off that TVS Eurogrip. Isn't the TVS Eurogrip the main thing? Yeah, I mean, essentially that. Etihad's the back. No one could see the back unless you're watching uh, MS Sony from the other end. But really quickly, jokes apart, what do you make of the little army touch? Because we know how MS loves that. Uh, and do you think it adds well, blends well into the yellow and a little bit of blue? I really like it. I mean, um, you know, again, like you said, I think MS really likes that. And, you know, so much of CSK is Dhoni, um, as much as we hate riding on that one player. But it's it's more of an emotion for us, right? So I think it's great to have those army patches. Um, but also another thing that I noticed, very interesting, um, is this also the only jersey that doesn't have a Geo branding anywhere? I just realized. I think eventually, I might be wrong, eventually they might just get a little bit of Geo anywhere, yeah. but I might yeah. be wrong no, because they, of the but whole... they were part of all the Geo ads. No, yeah, no, I yeah, see. yeah, they were part of Geo ads. Yeah. Before. So, I mean, maybe it's a part of something else, like the cap or something, yeah. I'm not sure. May not be on the jersey, yeah. May not be on the jersey. Yeah. 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 Okay, super. <laughs> so, let's just show you that particular final tier list then, because it makes for a good viewing and of course makes you think if you're going to buy this IPL let us know what you guys think remember RCB the only team who we can't showcase jersey because they do things very differently they're pioneers as if you know one yeah. I'm a spokesperson but but do you mean, guys do you guys have a feeling about what it's going to look like yes what? it's supposed to be the same just just the sponsors have changed that's it it's supposed to be the I, same just no nah, I have a sense they're going to go back to, I have a sense they're going to go back to blue and red like navy and like a really dark blue and red and get when, rid of when, the when when were they blue ever are they 2011 to 2015 before the red and black blue. were all blue right yeah, i mean that little blue. tinge tinge of blue with a mcdowell's branding not right? little tinge it was more than sorry and the wpl jersey was also navy right if i'm not wrong yeah yeah Dark, okay. a very dark shade of blue, like it can almost be mistaken for black, but yeah, it is uh, dark blue. But and also, based on the practice jerseys that the men's team have been uh, wearing, you know, the last couple of days, it does seem like they are probably uh, going back to blue, but uh, we're not sure. Like, I thought it'll just be a change of sponsors, like Santosh mentioned. Okay, I, I just want to see if there's actually uh, RCB announcing their new jersey. I don't think they have, I think. Ch uh, this person said they they have. I think they'll probably unbox I it tomorrow. I've been charging people eight hundred thousand bucks to not announce it early on. मतलब उसके लिए लोगों को बुला बुला के बोले कि भाई स्टेडियम आ अनाउंस करेंगे. Exactly. Interesting. saying RCB Puffs, the content team will showcase their jersey skills at the Unbox. KKR jersey, New Jersey, Riddhi Biswas. We've reviewed all of them and we're going to finally show you what Mansi has thought in terms of the tier list because we've divided it in three categories. And Mansi, you can talk to me about your selections right now. Just to recap this for the viewers joining us right now in this graphic. Because three, you're definitely buying. Obviously, you have a bias towards CSK. I think you already own a jersey. Maybe you might not buy the current one. But tier two, tier three. So just Again, summarize your picks. So, again, um, MI, RR, um, really neat, clean jerseys, pretty colors, um, you know, minimal branding. Uh, CSK, obviously, because it is an emotion. It is not just about the jersey itself for me. Uh, tier 2 is KKR. Uh, you have, uh, what is that, LSG, and then you have the GT jersey. Um, yeah. Again, Decent jerseys, nothing great about it, nothing, you know, too, too, uh, too exciting, nothing fancy. Um, and tier three is the absolutely not list top of which is um, SRH because it's horrendous. Uh, please, guys, next year, figure it out. <laughs> um, Delhi, again, red and blue, very boring combination. Uh, you know, there's too much happening with the branding as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's average and... This one, uh, Punjab, I don't even know. It's just, it's just, I don't know. I don't have anything to say about that one. <laughs> Okay, let us know if you guys agree or disagree with Mansi and any of our comments with regards to the jerseys because it's going to be a colourful IPL and those jerseys will certainly make it much more vibrant on the field indeed. Before we let Mansi go, uh, IPL predictions then. I know you're a fashion police in this show, but cricket predictions, obviously, you'll say CSK is going to win the title. But I want to ask you, do you think it'll be Dhoni's last IPL? Be honest with me. Um, yes, the man's old, let him breathe. Honestly, like, 
<laughs> let him chill in his farm pick strawberries let him do his thing uh, you know uh, but if you know obviously i want csk to win because it's going to be most likely dhoni's last um and it's going to be an emotional one if they uh, you know if they win last year was amazing we i remember staying up to like one at night uh, you know watching the match and just the anticipation was just killing all of us and knowing that this one might be is most likely dhoni's last one i think csk should win uh, because it is an emotional it will be an emotional one and not just for csk fans i think it'll be an emotional one for everyone because dhoni has been a part of it since day one he's been such a crucial player throughout um and you know you can't you can't disregard his skills on the field um so yeah it's going to be an emotional one for everyone okay super bachi really appreciate your time on this monday night live podcast for helping us rate and rank jerseys who would have thought all those years ago but look the time flies and flies very quickly thank you for making your presence there and we'll leave it there thanks Perfect. for having me bye super thank well you. done That was a little bit of fun that we wanted to have with, of course, our fashion designer that we've just thought of randomly. I don't know how I know her, but I know her somehow. <laughs> And let's move on to the best of the rest, guys. Essentially, uh, Akshay, if you if you spill the beans, we're going down under straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. Akshay, Akshay only was like like this. <laughs> if you know, ah, you know. छोड़ो छोड़ो आगे बढ़ते हैं best of the rest, best of the rest. Best of the rest, like you say, my friend. Where is that goddamn sting? It's here. Right, best of the rest is always that segment where we talk about all the things in the world of cricket which has gone by. We'll also showcase the weekly newsletter that we have for you on cricket.com because it's something to really consider. And there's so much which has gone by off the field and on the field. On the field, we'll talk about Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, New Ireland, um, and different things. Let's start there, guys, because I generally feel after looking at what Nick sent to me on Twitter today with Mushfiqur Rahim doing what he did in that presentation after Bangladesh won that series, that is beyond belief. I mean, did you expect that from a senior statesman, Nick? Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time; it won't be the last. Uh, apparently, they also said that they wanted to move on, but then we know how hard it is in terms of when you have rivalries like that. uh see sri lanka did it when they won the series prior uh, in terms of with the winners trophy uh, so rahim i don't i did not expect him to forget that and let alone not give uh, uh, an answer back but i think it, it it builds up well for asia cup right you are then looking for at newer rivalries and the game also i think was uh, something to look out for tawhid reza had a great series uh, if you haven't checked out his now please go out and check out a very good 96 there uh, and just right through i think it's also good that sri lanka lost to bangladesh it just tells you how you can't just keep turning up and expecting them to win ke bhai hum jeet jayenge avishka fernando i don't know i've probably backed him more than he's backed himself but i just don't know when that big one big knock will come so there are issues for there for sri lanka to sort in terms of antics yeah all all for fun and banter as long as it is within the lines as that's also important no 100% Akshay, it just gave me an impression of Royal Rumble WWE, bro. That <laughs> final series decider. I'll tell you why. Because if you look at what happened in that game, there were injury updates insanely coming through yeah. from Chaturgram. Mushfiqur hit in the hand by Tashkin Ahmed's yeah. delivery, and Mustafizur goes on a stretcher yeah. with cramps. Yeah. Chomia hurts his knee and neck. Chomia said, "God, that is." And then yeah. even Empire Richard Kettle, bro, was taken off due to extreme heat. Mazak chal raha hai, Chud. Sorry, but yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> मजाक की चल रहा है भाई मतलब बट दिस इज ग्रेट एंटरटेनमेंट क्या बोले यार लाइक हु थॉट बांग्लादेश श्रीलंका बॉल राइवलरीज वुड एंड अप यू नो सॉर्ट ऑफ यू नो गोइंग पास द इंडिया पाक राइवल द इंडो पाक राइवलरी द एशेस एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बट या इन टर्म्स ऑफ शेयर एंटरटेनमेंट क्वालिटी देयर इज नो वन इवन रिमोटली क्लोज टू बांग्लादेश एंड श्रीलंका मतलब मैच जाए मैच जाए जैसा भी हो ऑफ फील्ड एंड इवन टू सम एक्सटेंड ऑन फील्ड आई विल बी गजब मतलब सो पेटी एंड सो स्टूपिड ऐसा मतलब बचपन में जब हम खेल थे खेलते थे यू रिमेंबर द काइंड ऑफ फाइट्स वी वुड गेट इनटू अरे नहीं नहीं वो आउट अरे नहीं नहीं ये गया अरे वो बाउंड्री नहीं वो वैसा वाला फाइट है एकदम एकदम वैसा वाला जस्ट वेरी पेटी वेरी अननेसेसरी बट या मेक्स अ ग्रेट व्यूइंग फॉर श्योर 
even Nick's is toward Rioi, and so I'm saying toward Rioi for Nick's because even he got into a little altercation, I think, with one of the Sri Lankan players and had to be dragged away. And it just makes you think about this Nagan rivalry in the derby. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, it all started with that Nagan dance a few years ago, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then since then, no one has looked back. Whether it's Bangladesh fans, Sri Lankan fans, Bangladesh players, Sri Lanka players, everyone's involved. It's absolutely ridiculous. Thank you for this random comment and appreciation for that money. Thank you, really, really chuffed with that. A uh, rival which no one wants in through Martop and Mansi <laughs> confirming. I am a fashion stylist. Sorry, Mansi, but really, really thank you for your time. Right, uh, Afghanistan Island, then we can move on to because that's the other uh, cricket which is happening right now. And of course, PSL final is happening right now. Multan Sultan will just discuss that in just a bit. But Afghanistan Island, anyone coming from that series to play the IPL? Rashid, Josh Little, anyone else? Am I missing yeah. out on? Naveen? Noor Ahmed, bhi tha, na? Correct, Naveen. Noor, Naveen. Naveen. I'm expecting Tharoor. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. president. Yeah. President. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a lot of indeed. people coming there. Hopefully, hopefully Tharoor gets a game in and gets picked in the future times. Very exciting prospect to look. And also, just before, before we forget. Expect, sorry, your voice broke there. Uh, Tharoor, the, the spinner that they had in the last game also, he's picked up two. In the previous one also, he picked up. And also, look out for Rishad Hussain. Today, he hit yeah. Vanandu Asaranga for 24 runs in at one over. 48 of 18 balls. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. star somebody to look out for. Hasn't been a lot of games. Even in BPL, probably two only that I can remember. But some a name that we'll hear a lot of in the future. Okay. Remember, it was Afghanistan who leveled the T20 series 1-1. Um, and they lost the first match in the series, I think, for 30, 40 runs, 38 runs. I might be wrong. Um, and then we talk about more cricket, guys. We'll come to the PS1 in just a bit. But we spoke about Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Ireland. And Scotland came back from behind to win a three-match T20 series against US, UAE, if anyone cares. I know Pramod will. He's also mentioned uh, about the African games kicking off in Ghana. Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria Zimbabwe. beat... Yeah, Zima with Zima the gold Zimbabwe. eventually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Bad. Today, Nigeria beat it Namibia. I don't think that anyone saw. There was a potential run out of the non strikers and time had gone wrong as well. So, a lot of cricket happening for that, for that reason. Yeah. And the final, I think, is on the 23rd of March in Ghana, in Accra. So, that yeah. is great if the tournament's progressing. I think it's a total of eight teams competing 16 games, yeah. the African games. I mean, we've heard of the Asia Cup, but if the African Cup can be brilliant, it'll be brilliant. Then there was a two-match T20 series between PNG and Malaysia, uh, which ended 1-1, if you yeah. guys care about that. And more, more things to, of course... There was uh, a 10-wicket win in that in that, in that that series. If you haven't checked it out, just check it. It's, it's good fun. Good fun to catch up at these highlights. Yeah, indeed. By the way, I'll just take some comments coming through right now. Uh, Harsh going on to say Karoti feels more <laughs> Maharashtra local lad. And Abhinash, make your background more creative with Virat in RCB photos. <laughs> well, I've got a bat, Virat's old bat. I've got David's jersey and a little plant for good measure because we're the green game representatives. So that's something <laughs> in terms of my background. Uh, more comments to take, but we'll just showcase. Oh, and yeah. Akshay's pulled out sure. that. You, you won sure. that in the RCP quiz, right? You won that in the RCP yeah, quiz. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can never discount Akshay in terms of showing off that particular prize. <laughs> but literally, let's of course showcase that Newsly Week letter. Newsly yeah! Oh! Finally! <laughs> finally! I was waiting. I did not say for a reason, but yeah, finally we have it. <laughs> okay, as you can Newsly see... Newsly Week letter. <laughs> The 18th March edition, the weekly, yup, 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 you can see it over here. We've gone for Ashwin uh, off the field, a lot of things, uh, Rashid, and of course, Ashwin winning the WPL as well. More news that you can see in terms of replacements. Madhu Shankar missed the initial stages of the IPL. Then we knew that Harry Brook withdrew from the IPL. Not to forget, Jake Fraser McGurk and whether he'll start automatically for Delhi. Rishabh Pant, we know about his news and lots more in terms of the IPL corner in this week. A newsletter. Newsletter. Let me get it straight. Jesus Christ. Anyway, you could catch out all the highlights of the games going by as well. Did I say highlights? I mean, highlights. I should correct myself. And controversies of the week, uh, interviews of the week, so on and so forth. So you guys know the drill with regards to what we have to offer on cricket.com. 
Right, that was the best of the rest in this time for Akshay's quiz because this one is an absolute scintillating one. And Santosh would apart, all you lovely people. I love how you guys attempt and get everything right. But even this one is definitely going to bamboozle you 100%. <laughs> Right, Akshay, of course, last week you thought you had a decent question, but it wasn't so decent for some of the guys in the comments. And this was it. Now, can you please give the answers and then explain your how's that this week, sir? Sure. Uh, let's just have the graphic on. Yep, there we go. In terms of uh, the question last week, of course, we had um, a set of names put across and we also had a few blanks. So you guys had to guess the funda and also uh, bonus points for those who were able to fill in the blanks as well. Uh, the funda being, of course, that these players were uh, the first player of the match winners for their respective teams. So, uh, you know, like Mark Butcher for RCB, there's Brendan Maklum for uh, KKR, uh, there's Shrikant Vag, of course, for the Pune Warriors India and so on and so forth. So, these are the respective uh, player of the match winners for their sites. Now, of course, the blanks coming to the blanks. Quite a few of you, uh, quite a few of you came close uh, without really getting the cigar, like Avnish uh, would say. So uh, interesting. I'll I'll still sort of keep the uh, competition open because Santosh, if I'm not wrong, was the closest to uh, guessing the answers. But Vihit Kurma, congratulations on getting the voucher. Uh, do DM us on Twitter and uh, uh, we'll help you out with the voucher. Hope you guys can hear me because I don't think I can see you guys right now. Okay. You guys can hear me clearly? Can, can hear you. Yeah, 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 very clearly. All right, all right, great, great. Now, coming to this week's question, of course. There you go, this is the question. Very simple, all right. Uh, like the title says, identify the missing countries. So, right now, what's in front of you is a list of countries whose players have uh, represented or rather have played the IPL. So, these are basically the countries that have been represented in the IPL. I want you guys to identify the missing countries. All right. So, there are 12 names here. You've got to identify what the missing nations are. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how many of you get it right. So, of course, you need to name all of them in order to be able to uh, get the voucher. One lucky winner stands to win a cool 500 rupee Amazon voucher. So, there you go. That's uh, the how's that question for uh, this episode. Once again, identify the missing countries. We're talking about countries that have been represented in the IPL, which means players of countries who've played of different countries who've played in the IPL. So the 12 names here, you've got to identify the missing countries. Yep. So that's the hazard question for the day. I love that. Absolutely love that. Even though we're getting into the IPL, a little bit of an international tinge to that, but that's where you guys will have to rack your brains and then comment after the show is done. Akshay seems confident that there won't be any prizes for giving, but you never know. There's some smart lads in the comments as usual. Uh, does Tim David belong to Australia, Singapore, St. Turup, Mark Top? And yeah, Nepal with the player who's in jail right now, asking Greg, Namibia, Harsh Tiwari saying... But again, Indeed. congratulations on helping each other out. But there'll only be one winner, just to be clear, sorry uh, for cutting up Nisa. There'll only be one winner and the winner would be someone who uh, ends up answering all of them in the main comment section once the live stream has ended. How many are missing? Don't see blank sense. Santosh, that's the beauty of it. Matlab, agar hum... Have at it, have at it, like uh, we usually say. And yeah, uh, interesting that so many people are just going at it in the live chat here. But wait, karlo, bhai, wait. Karlo. Okay, super. Just to finish off proceedings on the Monday Night Live because we try to curtail it to 90 minutes. We're nearly touching that right now. But we have to, of course, end it with you lovely people who are going to be so integral in the next two and a half months to us. I'm talking all things questions from your side in the 12th man segment. Just chuckling on Vikas's little private text about a certain somebody, but let's move on right now and talk to you about the twelfth man segment because there's some fantastic questions already coming from you guys already. I'll try to pick as many as I can. Now, Greg, with a serious question, Nix, because he goes on to say, "Is there any cricket series that Nix does not follow?" No, I try to watch as many as much as I can because just going by what Kapil Dev said in 1983, what else are we here for? So, uh, what else to do but to leave the game and give it back to the game as much as you can? 
Bro, it's insane. Honestly, I've met so many people who love the game, but you just love it to a different level. I know it's like a job, essentially, and all of that, but you just literally have no biases, no particular qualms about watching any cricket, and that's why we absolutely love you in terms of the cricket.com family. So, brilliant stuff, Nick. Yes. Darshan yes. asked this, Akshay, and I'll give this one to you. Do you think Dhoni will stay with CSK in some capacity after retirement? Surely, right? The inevitable. He's never going to go ever to another franchise, Akshay, or do you think he will cross the Kaveri? I'd be very surprised if he goes to any other franchise there. Uh, I would imagine that he will sort of, uh, you know, remain at the CSK setup, you know, either as a mentor or, you know, as some batting consultant or something like that. But yeah, uh, he should ideally be a part of the CSK setup, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future in some different role, but yeah, in the foresee uh, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, but MS Dhoni is batting consultant. I don't think anybody ever saw it coming last 20 years. No, 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 indeed. Uh, can Dhoni play 2025 IPL? Otherwise, who's the captain of Chennai in the future? Mm, yeah, even I would have said the same thing. I agree with Nick's there because they won't want to do anything different in terms of that Jadeja experiment again. Yeah. Uh, this is a good question to give Nick's because he definitely likes Omar Zai. Uh, Aman asked next, will GT and Neraji play Omar Zai or Williamson? Now, that's the big call, right? Yeah, I think it also has to be seen who they think of as the other uh, option because, see, with No Shami, you need very good power play bowling. So then, who are you? I don't mind playing Omar Zai, Williamson both. Then you have Rashid as a third option. And then the fourth one is then definitely Miller. So that is also a fair way to go about it. But I also possibly see a position where they could start with three. And then take a call on the fourth. And I don't think that would be unfair as well. So uh, this and a lot more, it's a good time to plug in. Do join us for the mega previews because this is what we'll talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, which is tomorrow, day after and the day after that. Because we're going to do it in three parts. Mega preview, watch out for that. 8 p.m., remember. And lots of you guys can get cracking with your questions. We'll definitely take them. It's going to be a four-man panel as well. And you speak about GT. I can't believe how RCB have literally taken that attack off them. You talk about Lazari Joseph, Loki Ferguson, Yash, they are literally... Why didn't they try to go they for do. Rashid? They should have gone for That's Rashid also, no. Uh, <laughs> they Rashid. But yeah, speaking of GT, another one from Shlok to Akshay this time. How do you guys see Gil as captain? Akshay, what do you think? Because has he ever led in the past of some capacity? Nope. Yeah, not much. Never. Which is why it would be interesting to see. Of course, he was being groomed, uh, you know, as uh, the successor to Kohli and all of that. But uh, again, too young and too early to sort of uh, say anything or comment anything about it. So far, I don't think we've, we've sort of seen any glimpses of him, you know, tactically or otherwise or anything like that. So, I, I just don't know what to make of it. Let's see. Uh, we'll have to sort of wait for the season to go to understand, you know, what sort of a captain is he. And it sort of helps that he'll be working with Ashish Naira, who is uh, sort of renowned for being this this person who lets uh, the captain, you know, uh, uh, sort of hold his reign and give him freedom in terms of, you know, decision-making and all of that. So that means definitely have a lot of support uh, in the backroom staff. But uh, yeah, right now it's too early to sort of say anything. Okay. Uh, by the way, why saying yesterday watch along was superb. Thank you so much. Do go check all our reactions out. It was a brilliant one, historic one indeed. Uh, last couple of ones before we wrap up then. Noodle Hacks asking Nick, if KL opened, who would you have him as his partner essentially this season? Kyle Winnie, is. right? Oh, Kyle. Okay. Kyle and where is the cock features for you? Not playing. Okay. Not why playing. is that? I think the, pro the problem with Quinton at times I feel is promises a lot more. Uh, but then, see, when he's in form, then he's, he's undroppable. But then if, if I have KL, who I know is going to be selective and probably going to be the accelerating anchor, then for Quinton, I want somebody to be overpowering at the other end. So that mm -hmm. is why I would probably pair him with Kyle Mears and then ask him to go Jaima Dadi, which he anyways doesn't need the invitation, but just balance it out better. Okay. Neuralax also saying, hi guys, quick question. Does Umar Khan Khan is a different country person because that time he was in India? I think he does in Akshay's quiz at least, uh, for sure. And uh, Bala... No, no. Asked... To be clear, to be clear, he wouldn't... Just one thing though, to be clear, when we say represented, the player should have played for that country and then played, you know, at the IPL. So, Unmuk Chan here would be considered as an Indian player, not someone from the US because he... Okay, fair, fair. Uh, just take this one from Bala again, Akshay, because it surrounds RCB. 
Will Jax, yes, no. When will he even get a chance throughout the 14 games? If there's, of course, an injury, then he'll come in. But on merit, do you think he should start? Uh, to be honest, this is something I've actually been th thinking about. It wouldn't sort of be the worst of ideas to not go with an overseas player at the Chepok, an uh, overseas pacer, sorry, at the Chepok. Okay. So I'd rather go for some something. I mean, my combination would look something like Faf, uh, Faf Green, Maxi and Bill Jacks, and I'll go with another Indian spinner itself because Siraj and Dal two pacers should be good enough given that Green can also bowl an over or two if needed. We're talking about the Chepok here, so we don't need too many pace options. Given that this actually isn't the worst of ideas, I personally would uh, would be interested in playing Bill Jacks because they Chepok. We also saw the first two games at the Chepok last year yeah. saw 200, 210 being scored. It's not yeah. like Chepok will be will be a spin friendly surface through Same. and through. Yeah. I know we have haunting memories of the 2019 tournament opener. So if if, if the surface is actually even slightly batting friendly, Jackson really wreck a uh, wreak havoc over there. I think he's one of those batters in T20 cricket who wants to have a crazy dream. That crazy dream is basically to score 100 in the power play. He said this in record. Obviously, it's just a dream, like I said. But it's good to see that player have that kind of intent over there. But look, all you guys have so many questions for us. All, of course, regarding the IPL. And that's what makes the beauty of this tournament. That's what makes the beauty of this channel. Because we will give you and keep giving. So that's why I say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, join us. And we'll take all your specific questions. I'm sorry, Mohamed Aran. You have a fantastic one about Punjab Kings. And so do the rest of you guys. But we can't take more questions right now. And Dhruv, spot on. One more like for 50 likes on this MNL podcast. Because we've done... So much we can. We've accommodated Dan Weston. We got, of course, Mansi with her fashion police eyes dating the jersey and more fun things if you guys are just joining us. Right. It's time to, of course, wrap up proceedings on a personal note. Thanks, Max. It was one of the best days watching sports, especially how that United game unraveled, especially the fact that Aspie winning their first ever bloody trophy in the franchise history. It was a perfect Sunday, a super Sunday by all means. That's all we have time for. But like I keep saying, see you guys tomorrow. And Aman, take care of yourself, my friend. Uh, good to see you as well. Good to see Jaydeep, Harsh, uh, all the cool cats as well. Do follow cricket.com on our social media handles. Nix and Akshay will leave it in the description below. And I'm out of here. Have a fantastic week ahead. It's a build-up to the IPL. And cricket.com is our one-stop destination to check all things cricket, video and written. That's all we have time for. Bye-bye from me Cheers. and the boys. Cheers. Cheers.